We are recording. Hello, Paul. I'm just checking to see if make sure your um, audio and recorder work or voice work. I'm here. So the uh, the appellant's having some issues trying to log in. For some reason, it's wanting him to download the program or pay for it, which I know that's not going to be an issue. So, Aubrey, can I talk to you offline and see if I can't if we can't get him some help on how to log in? Yeah. Um. You want to just. Either call me on Teams or call me on my cell phone. Can I just call you on Teams really quick? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Sorry for the delay. Um, so Aubrey's going to get on the phone with him and try and talk him through how to log on. So hopefully this will not take too long. Thanks, John.
John, have you been able to help him get on yet? I gave Aubrey was going to give him a call. I gave her his phone number. So I'm assuming Aubrey's probably on the phone right now. Thank you. John, I, I may be speaking out of turn. This is Victoria, but I've gone through this lately and you have to have Google Chrome in order for it to be a bit seamless. So if Mr. Donahue doesn't have Google Chrome, he's going to be struggling with WebEx. Okay, I'll mention that. You can also use your, you can go through your phone as well. Um, but yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, I think it looks like we have an attendee. That's a good sign. Okay, Kevin is in the attendees list. If you could please move him to a panelist position. Yeah, I'm trying to do that and I have a hard time. It's not working right now. Yeah, Joel's one. Is there a button at the top that says allow? Yeah, but it's not, it's not allowing me to, to highlight you? Kevin and I, I like the allow button. Can you make me the host for a minute? Yes. There you go, Aubrey. Okay. You're the host now. All right. I don't think it's allowing him because he joined through the browser. I know we had we had some issues last night at planning commission. Mm -hmm. where specifically, if you looked under like the sound, there wasn't that little set of headphones that indicates they can communicate. 
Uh, if I clicked on their name and then hit the allow button, it would send something to them to allow them to speak. Oh, yeah, that's the audio rich something or other. Um, it's not giving me the option to allow him. It's completely like blanked out. And I'm not sure why. That's. Um, I guess, could we ask him to try to connect through his phone? I will give him a call back. Sorry about that. All right, thank you. Okay, so Kevin's going to try and call in. Um, he was on Google Chrome and that wasn't allowing any access. So um, we should see him. I don't think he got out of Google Chrome, but we should see a call in number shortly.
Hello. Hello, is Hello, this Kevin? Kevin, Kevin yes. can you hear us? Yes, I can now. Okay, thank you. I apologize for the uh, uh, technical difficulties. Not at all. I'm Craig, I think we have everybody here. All right. Thank you. Um, today is Thursday, the 12th of August, 2021. My name is Craig Call. I'm a hearing officer appointed um, to serve in Salt Lake City to hear various issues, variances, and appeals. Today, we are convened to hear an appeal brought by Kevin Donahue involving a planned development and preliminary plat at approximately 1844 and 1852 East 2700 South. This is case number PLNA PP 2021 00696. What we, uh, what the normal procedure is with these appeals is to hear from the person who brought the appeal and then to hear from the city in response this is not a public hearing, and so members of the public do not appear to be present. But uh, in this case, where there's an applicant, that applicant will also be heard. And so um, once the applicant has spoken, then everyone will have a chance to respond again, and the uh, person bringing the appeal would have the last word. I have not had any, I have no information about this matter other than the 81 page staff report I received. I've not spoken with anyone about it. I am a land use attorney and have been that for a number of years. Um, but I, um, I've also been doing appeals hearing work for eight years or so. So uh, my job will be to try to determine whether or not in the ap approval of this uh, application, the planning commission um, did not do so properly, either because there was not substantial evidence to support it or the application, it was illegal to approve it. So let me say that I have read the material and uh, think I pretty well understand what is being argued on all by all involved. And so uh, there may not be a need to repeat things, but I would uh, appreciate the uh, comments that you may have to start us out, Mr. Donahue, and then we'll go from there. Uh, yes, I, um, so you, I, I just want to be clear. Uh, sure. Please. Uh, have, so you've had a chance to review all the materials, is that correct? Yes, I have in particular read your 10, 11, 12 page uh, document that was in the staff report, the city's brief and the response of uh, Ms. Hales on behalf of the applicants, the Harvaths. Okay, have you had a chance to uh, watch the two meetings, the, uh, the commission meeting as well as the sugar house uh association meeting i have not okay okay well um my my appeal pretty much says everything plain and clear and in summary that is that the proceedings of the planning commission were none like I have ever seen before. And that is many appropriate times, such as one, when the only community member that spoke was speaking, and two of the commission members appeared to be absent. One walked away from her chair and the other turned her screen off, and for all I know, she was not there, not available, specifically when the community member was speaking. 
thumbing or no thumbing their nose at the community. Secondly, the chairman Shear acknowledged just in a simple statement the concerns of the community, but didn't even stop there with a period and went on to praise Chris Earl and what a fantastic job he had done. Next, instead of asking the applicant what the re what their reasoning was in certain decisions for the applicant, they answered for the applicant. And I believe the question was looking to see why it wasn't made into a flag lot and the commission answered for the applicant that they're they're wanting to keep that free from any flag lots so they could resell the property at 1850, 1852. And lastly, or second to lastly, is the comment made by the chair prior to the vote coaching the legal counsel for the applicant not to interfere because she because she thought that she would be pleased with the outcome and how she knew the outcome of the vote I am uncertain so there was a lack of a quorum present throughout the entire meeting particularly when the residents who should be making this decision in a large part by their support or lack of support were speaking. That says a great deal to me. I'm, I'm familiar with meetings and, and proceedings and being on, uh, having been on several committees and spending a good deal of time in administration. You have to re retain the structure of the meeting. Otherwise, it's a free for all and anything can happen. Structure was not maintained in this meeting and it does not have any legitimate basis for making a decision. That's the, that's the first portion is the legitimacy. And I, I find it hard to believe that we're even here today with the city having the knowledge that they do of how that proceeding went that they pursued this to this point. It, it's wasting people's time, particularly my time. I have over 80 hours in this of a physician. That's 80 hours of physician time that I and my patients have been robbed of by this application. This application, who from the plan, from the beginning, indicates two garages on the plan, one at 1844, one at 1852, which do not function as garages. They have not had cars in them. One of them doesn't even have a, a garage, do garage doors. It's got garage doors on it, but they were covered over. And I see many people come and go, they act much more as dwellings. One of them is under investigation. And as of today, the second one at 1844 will be under investigation. The Harbass have not complied with showing the public that these are indeed garages, which says a great deal. So this application from the get-go was incorrect, misrepresented. Next is a very important issue, which perhaps the most important, and if, if people are really interested in getting to the truth of this and being done with it, they will watch the Sugar House video where the where that is where the Harvath explain their little plan to develop numerous lots in this 90 year old long standing farming community, which was protected by a decision made in 1997 by the Salt Lake City Council. That is very important because then you'll understand the true motivation here. And the majority of the members of this community do not want this. In our opinion, weighs most heavily. Because where the city's where the city's ability and its and their ability to make decisions for the citizens has been granted to them by the citizenry, that ends long before my my right to build my community. 
and keep my community strong. And when the city supports the knowing incremental destruction of this old farming community and has knowledge of it because Chris Earl was present at the meeting in Sugar House where they described their little plan to develop numerous lots. The city is supporting this destruction of my community and it is also supporting the fact that they're engendering resentment within the community members and that's and that's not the city's pur within the city's purview. The city does not reach into people's lives like that. If you review the the information, the city planner in his in his report provides many misleading and flat out false statement flat out false statements with regard to. The, how their plan is supported and supports the standard and it, and it's just obvious if if you will read if you read that and see in fact what's going on these half acre lots are not don't have dwellings in the back we have a large space in the back and everyone has respected that except for the Harvats. Now they want to build, they wanted to build on two lots. They wanted to change the zoning all by themselves without seeking any, any input from their neighbors. The city denied that. So now they just want to build on one and put a dwelling in the back area where no one has a dwelling. And that is not congruent with any of the standards to, to go beyond and put a dwelling back there in that large collective space where there, there is none. And the arguments that they provide are just not based in reality, quite frankly. That's all I have to say for right now. All right, thank you. Let me turn to the city. Uh, there are a number of city individuals involved in our call who'd like to speak for the city. Mr. Carl, I'll take this. Uh, Paul Nielsen with the Salt Lake City Attorney's Office uh, on behalf of Salt Lake City. Um, you, you mentioned at the outset, Mr. Call, that uh, you've been doing this for a while. You are a land use expert, and um, I am fully aware of that because uh, you've been the city's appeal hearing officer for a while. You were the property rights ombudsman and you've been involved in um, numerous land use disputes. So uh, it would be offensive for me to try to tell you at this point uh, what your role is and what the standards are. You're fully aware. I'm just gonna highlight that it is the appellant's burden to prove that the planning commission uh, made an error uh, that their decision was arbitrary, capricious, or illegal, uh, that there's no substantial evidence in the record to show that the decision was arbitrary and capricious. And none of that has uh, been provided. Um, and I'm only saying this to you, Mr. Call, because I need this on the record. Uh, you're fully aware of, of uh, what the appellant's obligation is here and that it has not been met. I do want to address a couple of things uh, really briefly. Um, uh, Mr. Donahue mentioned that he uh, has witnessed a lot of these meetings. I don't doubt that. Uh, he's talking about a Sugar House Community Council meeting, which is not part of this proceeding. The Sugar House Community Council is not a governmental entity. It is a private entity that Salt Lake City recognizes as uh, a community organization that provides us with feedback, but it is not a governmental entity. There is no decision making that occurs there. And uh, if there is a video of that, it wouldn't be part of the record. Um, there was a, a comment made about uh, commissioners being absent during the meeting. Uh, now, I did notice, I watched the video, I did notice that. Uh, um, one of the commissioners did get up and leave her desk 
momentarily. I also noticed that she had what appeared to be uh, an AirPod in her ear so that she could continue to hear the comments being made by the magic of Bluetooth. Um, and I, I will tell you, there have been many planning commission meetings where my camera has been off uh, to allow me some conveniences that might not otherwise be available in a meeting. Um, don't think that in most planning commission meetings, uh, while we're meeting remote, people want to watch me eat or do whatever. Um, I, I don't know who the other, I, he indicated there was another commissioner whose camera was off. There is no requirement that the cameras uh, remain on during a meeting. Um, I have no reason to believe that the commissioner uh, whose camera was supposedly off uh, was not attending the meeting and not listening. Um, and then I, I do want to, I, I want to address the, the comment that uh, the commission chair Brenda Shear made about um, uh, the, the comment she made to uh, legal counsel for the applicant about um, being out of order. Uh, the first part of that statement uh, was in response to Ms. Hales trying to make a comment while the commission had closed the public hearing and was in its deliberative uh, state at that point. Um, the other comment was about, the second part of that comment was about uh, the outcome. And uh, I, I don't think there's anything nefarious there. Uh, you know, if I had my preference, I, I would not have stated things the way that the commission chair did. Uh, but frankly, she was just reading the room uh, as to what the, the commission seemed likely to do in, in that situation. Um, because everything pointed to the application meeting the standards for plan development approval. Um, so I, I, there's, there's a lot of, um, There's a lot of accusation here as to uh, nefarious behavior that uh, is not substantiated in any way. And, uh, you know, I, I regret that I'm actually giving it any oxygen, but it, uh, I think it's important to, to point out that uh, the Planning Commission does act with integrity. There's no behavior I have seen at any point pointing to some uh, conspiracy or preordained result or uh, impropriety on behalf of, of this commission and certainly not in this application and, and at that public meeting on uh, June 9th. Um, there was a comment Mr. Donahue made that our opinion weighs most heavily um, and, and that's incorrect. We don't uh, defer to anyone's opinions in these matters. Our planners and our commissioners look to the standards that are established by code, uh, and, and that's what they make their decisions uh, on. Um, the rest of my arguments are in my brief. Uh, there's uh, a lot of stuff that was suggested about infill development being illegal, which clearly it isn't, um, about uh, low density residential. Uh, the math didn't add up on, on those arguments. Um, and, and then the issue as to compatibility, and there was really nothing offered other than uh, a neighbor's opinion. Uh, so at this point, I'm, I'm just going to stop talking because really, my job is done here. There is no, uh, there's nothing that the appellant has offered uh, that could show that the planning commission's decision was arbitrary, capricious, or illegal. Thank you, Mr. Nielsen. Ms. Hales, would you like to comment? Um, uh, yes. Thank you. This Victoria Hales on behalf of the Harvass. Um, we would submit for your decision based on the strengths of the written materials. I have addressed the bias issues in my written submissions and uh, the city of Salt Lake also has addressed them. I did relook at the video. One planning commissioner 
stands up for 12 seconds and is off screen, but no indication that she wasn't listening the whole time. As all of us who attend many of these meetings, many of us go off screen while we uh, powder our nose or uh, have a drink during a two hour uh, and 40 minute planning commission meeting. So uh, I just would submit it based on the strengths of the written materials. And uh, I understand that Mr. Donahue doesn't like the decision, but disagreeing with the decision does not mean that it is subject to an appeal. So we would request that you uphold the decision of the planning commission. There is substantial evidence and Mr. Donahue has not met his burden of proof. Thank you. Thank you. Just making a few notes here. Mr. Donahue, would you like to comment further? Yes, actually, I would. Um, in the first place, the Sugar House meeting is part of the record. Uh, uh, City planner Chris Earl attended that meeting. So, yes, it is part of the record. And I think it's interesting that Salt Lake City wants to exclude that because when it is, when you do watch that, you will see the Harvass little plan developing numerous lots in my community, which I've been a member for 30 years, which is a 90 year old farming community, which is protected by a previous action in 1997 by the Salt Lake City Council requiring an 80 foot road frontage. And yes, there are established codes that the city has that are changed and modified and bent all of the time. That's why, because of all of these variations in standards, that is why particularly, particularly in the meeting, the chairman doesn't try to guide the applicant's legal representative by stating what she stated which was she let me let me find the statement here because this is very important this is this is outrageous i i can't even believe that uh that this statement was made well in the first place let me let me go back a little bit more chris earl uh was quick to let me know that if in the commission hearing the information that was presented was not factually based, it would be considered public clamor. And that's very denigrating and demeaning to the public to call it public clamor. These are people's feelings and thoughts about their homes, their dwellings, where their lives are, where their lives occur. And it appears to me really that the planning division does not take that seriously and consider that. And in fact, they, they have a disdain for it, calling it public clamor. Public clamors is what Chris reminded me uh, that they that they call that. I thought that was I thought that was pretty telling myself. And and you know, I, I know I don't want to live in a city where people don't have the thoughts and feelings about their homes. But I guess that's that's the kind of city that Salt Lake wants, you know. That's that's kind of what I'm getting through all of this. But when the chairman of the committee can can make a comment that that she thinks that that the applicant will be happy with the outcome before the before the vote, that, that just doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. People don't make those comments like that and, and and that all by itself just negates this whole thing outside of the fact and you you'll note that it has never been disputed that the two that the two buildings on the two lots which are listed as garages i live i live right next door i see everything that goes on over there 
has people coming in and going out of them all the time. They already have two dwellings, in my opinion, on each lot. And, and they just want to keep developing, just like they wanted to change the, the, the zoning without con considering what the residents want. And yes, the city attorney's wrong. Our opinion does matter. We are the ones who pay the money, who pay, which, which supports the checks that the city employees get every two weeks. Yes, our opinion does matter. We have paid these taxes for 30 years myself, other people for 40 years. And, and I, I disagree. When, when, when a, a, one of the community members, the only one who spoke, is, is about ready to break into tears and her name is Lori Polson. And when you watch that, you'll notice she's about ready to, you can hear that she's about ready to break into tears. And those two commission members, one of them gets up and leaves and the other one turns their camera. That tells the story to me right there, along with the public clamor comment and just the demeaning aspect. Um, our opinion does matter and it will be heard. The fact that, uh, you know, David, David Harbath uh, canceled or forgot on three occasions of a site visit by an enforcement officer to see if that garage was indeed a dwelling. And so they're thumbing their nose at the city and the city sitting there supporting them. I, I don't get that. I don't get any of that. This is all very sketchy. And, you know, the attorney does not, does not address the specific issues that I addressed. So, infill is not allowed in this area because it is a very low density residential area. So, I just want to say, if, if, again, if the integrity and the standards of the meeting and the procedures of the meeting are not, not upheld, and they're even taken to the point of ridiculous, to the ridiculous point where the chairman is predicting the outcome of the vote. That's, that's obscene. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Just a minute while I finish my notes here. And please watch that, uh, please watch that video of the Sugar House Council. It's listed on my on my appeal and you'll see you can see the hard ass with their plan you'll know their real motivation and why in my opinion the city planner should have reported that back to the city when he knew that there was a plan to develop numerous of these lots in this long-standing at his 90 year old farming community but he did not he did not represent all of the members of the city. He represented the hard baths. Just a second. All right, thank you. Well, having heard from all the parties, I think that concludes our hearing. I will take the matter under advisement and render a written opinion addressing each of the issues that Mr. Donahue has raised in writing. Once that decision is issued, there'll be a 30 day window that it can be appealed to the district court. Thank you. That concludes our hearing today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Call. Thank you, Craig. I'm stopping the recording.